Hey guys, Ostrich Vox here, and welcome to my review of Into the Wand. My first episode review of Star vs. The Force of Evil, and oh my god, what a great episode to start on. Now, I've been following Star since the beginning, and I've been following Season 2 very closely because I've been very interested in the plot lines, and you know, especially Tothi and the Star family, his connection to Star family, and this episode deepened all of that to a whole nother level with a lot of subtext, and it just blew me away. From the second I saw this title last month, uh, like I think it was beginning of last month I saw this title, I already knew we would get some answers on Toffee, on the wand, just because you know, Stars 1 has been acting up and acting really strange since the events of Storm the Castle. And now we know why, because Toffee's finger was in there. And that's the first thing I want to talk about before I forget. If you guys are wondering, wait, when did Toffee put his finger in the wand? You actually did see that in the show, in the episode of Storm the Castle. When, um, Toffee got Star's wand, there's a scene of him just closing the wand, insinuating he put something in there, and a lot of people did think at the time that it was his finger, and that was the case, and that's what contaminated his wand. <laughs> I'm sorry, Star's wand. Gentlemen. So this episode finds Star going into the wand to finally fix it, and she runs into future versions of herself? I guess your memories overlap in the wand, so the new memories become old memories, which means I, I, I guess it was the same star, just, but like, I really, that's really confusing. I understand how it works, but trying to explain it, oh my god, just, that hurts my head. <laughs> in her wand, her memories, she has Echo Creek, Marco's hoodie, and there's actually a several times reference from Gravity Falls in that locker. So, hey, shout out to that. And Star runs into Chauncey, which is... A butterfly family, I wouldn't even call him pet. If they said what he was, I'm forgetting. Chauncey is basically to Queen Butterfly that Lion is to Steven, or was, because Chauncey is dead, but his memory is in Star's Wand. And they end up in Butterfly Castle with a bunch of tapestries of all the other queens, and this is where shit gets real. We see the tapestry of Moon Butterfly, Star's mom, Queen Butterfly, Blasting off Toffee's finger. But there's so much new shit in this scene that I want to go through the tapestries one by one. Selene the Shy, which is Star's great grandma, and I, the, basically the blurb of her tapestry was that the wand has secrets that'll never be told, aka what the wand has done, the hands of the wand, Star may never find out, you know, the, the world may never know. Muni may never know. But of course, Star will probably know, and the audience will too. Also, we didn't really see what uh, symbol is on Shy's cheeks. I'm really curious if it's the clubs or not, because, you know, um, in the room, we see the a heart, spades, the diamond, and the clubs. And the club is a foil to the diamond. And while Queen Butterfly has a diamond on her cheeks, Miss Heinous has the clubs on her cheeks. So there's a connection there, and a lot of people are wondering, well, who's going to be the Spades character? Who's going to be the foil to Star? And it's actually her possible grandmother. There's obviously a relationship to her queen, since they're in, all the queens were in there, but Eclipsa, who is the Spades character, and I was really excited to finally see, you know, the Spades character. And... As a foil to Star, I already see the parallels. Just like Star, well, you know, a lot of people want Star to marry Marco, who's not a Mewman. Eclipsa also fled off with someone who wasn't a Mewman, but a monster. Even though she married a Mewman king. But see how we don't have all the details for that? And if she fled, that means, you know, the, the Butterfly family would be ashamed to ever even mention her, to speak about her. So if she is Star's grandma, that has huge implications on who Toffee, his relation to the Butterfly family, actually is. But that is for a theory video. There's also Solaria the Monster Carver, and her blurb said, Castle stormed, a hero is born. So I'm assuming the Butterfly Castle at one point was attacked by monsters, and possibly even left her orphaned. So when she grew up, she became a really tough fighter, and she hates monsters. You see her in that tapestry, slaying them bitches! Just going like completely ape shit, and her wand is a sword and oh, like a laser sword. Oh my god, that was badass. Also, with M Moon Butterfly, you know, Queen Butterfly Star's mom's tapestry, 
it said the immortal monster and mentioning Moon's darkest spell. So we know now that Toffee is immortal, which makes sense because regeneration. Or at least should be, and he actually has not aged. He looks exactly the same as he did recently than as when he did when he fought against Moon all those years ago. So now it makes sense why in season one we never had an interaction between the Butterfly family and Toffee. And I really doubt that's his actual name. So even if they did bring up Toffee, there's a half and half chance that King and Queen Butterfly will actually know who she's talking about. Or maybe Toffee was a nickname given to him by Queen Butterfly. This is all conjecture for now. And also, Eclipsa has to be important to Toffee because when Star grabbed his finger, there were some flashing images from Storm of the Castle and Queen Eclipsa's tapestry. Oh my god. So hype. So, so hype. I also find it really interesting how Marco wasn't, you know, with Star when she went to her wand. I like how he wasn't really present in the episode until the very end because we do know that there's been some setting up with Marco and Toffee and the whole Butterfly family, like, by some behind the scenes setup, some foreshadowing. So the fact he didn't read those tapestries, he didn't give his input or two cents on, you know, the Butterfly family is very interesting. And I'm really curious to see how that's going to come to play. Also, another minor yet huge thing, Star's Tapestry. We saw it was being sewn and that there's no walls on it, but Star's boots are present in the tapestry so far. Which means that she may become queen at a younger age, or that if they're portraying the queens at their peak, or something notable, besides Solaria, besides Eclipsa, because, you know, she ran off a monster, that means Star must do something noteworthy and huge at a young age. Foreshadowing and set up at his finest, folks. And also, can Toffee regenerate from just his finger? Because Star just tossed into the closet where her book of spells is. And if you guys remember a few episodes ago, when Ludo and Star had their big confrontation, he went back and spoke to the wand and said, there is a book. And a lot of us are assuming that Toffee is inside the wand. Can he be at two places at once? I don't know, but I'm really excited to see where this is going to go. And this was just a really good episode. A really good lore dump. And I definitely have a theory coming from this that I'm going to try to get up. Hopefully this week. Maybe tomorrow. And just, ooh! I, 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 I really enjoy Star. And I really enjoyed this episode. And I'm not going to be a pizza thing just because I don't really have much to say about the episode. It was funny. The ending scene was really good with, um... Marco causing the owner of the pizza restaurant to break down, Emilio. But Ponyhead episodes, they're alright. She's kind of an annoying character to me. But these are my thoughts, and I want to hear yours, so please comment down below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Ostra Glocks, signing out.